Hello. Uh, this time, uh, I would like to present an almost complete solution to the eigenvalue problem for a three by three matrix that is not really that simple as the ones that usually are provided in a textbook. And I will try to decompose it uh, in a step by step process so that you can follow it and use it at any moment that you encounter a problem that is similar to this one. So I'll start. Uh, the first thing that I would like to say is that we want to calculate the characteristic polynomial. So we compute the characteristic polynomial. Uh, this is, I want to know what is the determinant of A minus T times the identity. Now, T is just a symbol, right? It has no associated meaning. Um, it's just an expression where we're gonna get a polynomial expression in T, by the way. So in this case, uh, we want to find the determinant of the following matrix, negative three minus T, negative two, negative six, or three minus T, six, two, one, or minus t. Now, I have shown you uh, in my previous videos how to calculate the determinant using a row reduction process uh, or using a cofactor expansion. Now, for this case, I like to show uh, at least to some level of detail uh, what is called the three by three trick. So for this time, uh, we apply a uh, three by three determinant trick. Now, this consists of the following. I will take the first two rows of the matrix, uh, append them to the matrix itself at the bottom, and then compute some diagonals. And from those diagonals, we'll obtain the determinant. So I'll show you uh, essentially what we have to do is make the following construction. So I have negative three minus T, negative two, negative six, or three minus T, six, two, one, four minus T, then negative three minus T, negative two, negative six, four, three minus T, six. Now, from this table that we have here, uh, we're gonna compute three diagonals that we're gonna regard as positive. And then also three diagonals that we're gonna regard as negative. Products of diagonals, of course. So we will obtain the following expression on the plus, we have negative three minus T times three minus T times four minus T plus four times one times negative six plus two times negative two times six minus negative six times three minus T times two minus six times one times negative three minus T. And lastly, minus four minus T times negative two times four. Now, after uh, some serious arithmetical manipulation, what we get is the following expression, negative three T cubed uh, plus, 4t squared minus 5t plus 2. Now, once we have uh, the characteristic polynomial, which is present here, we go to the second step. Remember, uh, the intention is to find all those matrices for which the following, I mean, all the values of t for which this matrix is singular. Uh, in other words, what we want to find 
is the roots of the characteristic polynomial. So the roots of the characteristic polynomial are exactly the eigenvalues of A. So, in other words, we now need to solve negative three, three to the power of three plus four t squared minus five t plus two equal to zero. Now, from this, um, we may attempt several things, but something that we can try immediately is synthetic division. Uh, we explore, in this case, since this is a monomial expression uh, with, in, with a coefficient of one in the cube term. Well, uh, I look for the divisors of two and then uh, try to see if those divisors of two uh, are actually roots of the polynomial. Uh, in this case, let's make the following substitution. Uh, note that negative one plus four minus five plus two is zero. So <clears throat> uh, one is a root of this polynomial. Now we found this essentially by synthetic division and some inspection, but this is all. This is this is very helpful because once we have one root, then we may decrease uh, the expression that we have here into uh, a quadratic. How so? Well, because now we know that t minus one divides the polynomial negative three negative t to the third power plus four t squared minus five t plus two. And well, we'll do the full calculation here. So we have t minus one and then a long division plus four t squared minus five t plus two. And then well, we start like in a regular division process. So negative t squared and we will subtract negative t cubed plus um, t squared. And this results in um, 3t squared minus 5t plus 2. So I will use plus 3t. So now we'll subtract 3t squared minus 3t. From this, this will result in negative 2t plus 2, which now is just negative 2 that I need here. So I negative negative 2t uh, plus 2 and the remainder of 0. So this is saying that negative t cubed plus 4t squared minus 5t plus 2 is equal to t minus 1 times negative t squared plus 3t minus 2, which of course I may rewrite as negative t minus 1, factoring a negative 1 from this expression, um, t squared minus 3t plus 2. But then I recognize that this quadratic expression now may be factored in this fashion. which now we can reduce to negative t minus one squared times t minus two. So at this point, we have uh, essentially factor completely, or we have factor completely the polynom the characteristic polynomial of the matrix. Now, once we achieve this feat, we can read off the eigenvalues. So, 
lambda equals to one and for historical reasons. And lambda two equal to two are the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Now, second step. Once we get to this point, and once we have the eigenvalues at our disposal, let's, uh, let's now uh, make a description of the eigenspaces. In other words, what we're gonna do is find a basis for the eigenspace of each eigenvalue. So next step, which would be the third. Find basis for the associated eigenspaces. Okay, so we'll go one by one, right? First, when lambda is one. Well, when lambda is one, uh, the eigenspace that we're trying to describe is the following. Is nothing else but the null space of the matrix A minus one times the identity. So this becomes a problem of finding a basis for an old space. Well, once we have this, we can just apply a row reduction process and that's exactly what we're gonna do. We apply a row reduction process to the matrix obtain in this fashion. So I'll take this matrix, make a copy here, and then just append as a column the zero matrix. Okay, so we'll obtain something that looks like this. I have negative four on the first uh, row and column, negative two, negative six, zero, four, two, six, zero, two, one, three, zero. Now, what I'll do is that to row one, I add row two by identifying that they're negatives to each other. So I get the following uh, reduction, zero, 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 uh, four, two, six, zero, two, one, three, zero. Uh, next operation uh, that I will follow is uh, to the second row. I'll multiply it by one half and I will obtain this zero, 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 zero. Uh, two, one, three, zero. Two, one, three, zero. You may say, why is that you're not following the standard process? Uh, because I identify some patterns, right? Look, this row that we had here is just half of this one. Or you want to say that this is just uh, this one, the double of this is this one here. Right? So from this point on, what I'll do is that to row number three, I subtract row two, and um, I'll get the following expression. Zero, 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 two, one, three, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so at this point, we say the following. A vector, of the form x1, x2, x3 is 
in the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue one. If and only if 2x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to zero. Where is that I get this expression? Well, this equation, well, I'll get it from this row, the only one that is non-zero, right? The only one that provides um, information that is not redundant. These two rows, you say that zero is equal to zero. Okay, but then from here, just some manipulation. So I'll take uh, this second, uh, second unknown and express it in this way. But then this says that this happens if and only if I can write the vector x1, x2, and x3 as x1 uh, minus 2, x1 minus 3, x3, uh, x3, which now I can decompose as x1 times 1, negative 2, 0, plus x3 times 0, negative 3, 1. These are exactly the vectors that form a basis for the null space of the matrix that we started with. This is. The eigenspace associated with one, the eigenvalue one, is generated by the following set of vectors, one, negative two, zero, and zero, negative three, one. What does this mean? This means that the eigenvectors of associated with the eigenvalue one are all non-zero linear combinations of these two vectors. Now, something that we have to remark is that in this case, the dimension of the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue one is two. Why? Because this basis consists of two vectors. Uh, and so this is what we call the geometric multiplicity. And the largest K for which T minus one to the power of K divides the characteristic polynomial is two. Where do we see that? Of course, the largest non-negative integer. Well, look at the complete factorization, right? The largest power is two, as indicated here, right? Uh, so what does it say? Well, this says that the geometric multiplicity and the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue are equal. The geometric multiplicity being the dimension of the eigenspace and the algebraic multiplicity being this largest uh, power, right? That makes this division possible. Okay, so in this case, the geometric and algebraic multiplicities are equal, of course, for this eigenvalue, right? Let's see what happens with the other. Uh, but for the other, we're just going to essentially repeat the process. Right? So now what happens with the second alien value? Lambda equals to two. Well, for this one, um, we want to calculate 
or we want to describe. Meaning to find a basis for the eigenspace associated with lambda equal to two, which is nothing else but the null space of A minus two times the identity. So just as before, what we're gonna do is apply row reduction on the matrix A minus two times identity adjoint with the zero column, column vector. Okay, so in concrete, in concrete terms, this is negative five, minus two, minus six, zero, four, one, six, two, one, two, zero, and zero. Okay, so right away, uh, we're gonna apply two operations. So first I'll multiply the third row by one half. And then exchange row one with row three. This to obtain a pivot. So one, one half, one, zero, four, one, six, zero, negative five, negative two, negative six, zero. Then from here, we apply two options. First, to row two, we subtract four times row one. And to row three, we add five times row one. And we obtain the following. One, one half, one, zero, zero, negative one, two, zero, zero, one half, negative one, zero. Well, now from here, we're done with uh, the elimination part on the first column. We move to the second. So I'll select this as a pivot and I'll do the following. So negative one times the second row and I'll get this one, one half, one, zero, zero, one, negative two, zero, zero, one half, negative one, zero. Okay, now two operations are gonna follow. <clears throat> the first one is that to row number three, I'll subtract one half of row number one, number two, I'm sorry. And to row number one, I subtract one half of row number two. And we obtain now the following matrix. One, zero, two, uh, zero, one, negative two, zero, 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 zero here, zero here, zero here. Well, what does that mean? Well, now let's, it's time to interpret uh, this uh, row reduce column form of the matrix. And uh, to say that a vector x1, x2, x3 belongs to the eigenspace associated with the eigenvalue two, if and only if, well, we have this system of equations, x1 plus two x3 is equal to zero, and x2 uh, minus two x3 is equal to zero. Equivalently, we get that x1 is equal to negative two x3, and x2 is equal to two x3. Well, so this happens exactly when we may describe a vector x1, x2, x3 in the form negative two x3, two x3, x3. But from here, I may factor x3 and express it as just x3 times two 
negative two, one. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, this means that this vector, right, when we construct the set, it will generate linearly the associated eigenspace. So to put it in these terms, the eigenspace associated with lambda equal to two is the span of the set containing the vector two, negative two, one. What can we say from here? Well, since this forms a basis for the eigenspace based on the manipulation that we follow and the type of uh, reduction that we perform, it says that then the dimension of the eigenspace associated with two, which is the, the geometric multiplicity of this eigenvalue, well, is one which is exactly the algebraic of the eigenvalue. Why? Well, all that we need to do is to go back to the polynomial, the characteristic polynomial. And look for the largest power of t minus two that divides the polynomial. But in this case, well, it's like having an implicit one here in the expression. So, well, with this, we can say that also, also algebraic multiplicities coincide or are equal. What can we say about the matrix? Well, the matrix is not defective. Well, that's a very, very complete description of the eigenvalue problem for this particular matrix. Actually, in almost full details. Now, the only thing that I may want to leave it, perhaps for a subsequent video, tell me if you like it, tell me in the comments if you'd like me to go over that, is, well, um, what happens when we collect all these vectors that we obtain? The one from here and this two. If we collect them, well, we form a new set. So what about the set that is formed by negative one, negative two, zero, zero, negative three, one, two, negative two, one. Well, is this a linearly independent set? If so, it would become a basis for R3. Um, so if this set is a basis for R3, uh, what can we say about the representation of the transformation given by the matrix product? Well, that will be something for a subsequent video. I hope that you enjoy it. Take care. See you next time.